today we're going to continue with more past paper practice and in particular we're going to be focusing on physical change and chemical change and substances that undergo these changes. We know that physical change is something that can potentially affect the physical state or phase of a substance. So what I mean by phase is it could be a substance going from a solid to a liquid or a liquid to a gas. It could also involve something like the breaking of a substance or the division of a substance into many smaller pieces. So for example, crushing powder, crushing a can, breaking glass. Those are all examples of physical change. And notice how in physical change, no new substances or compounds are formed. So we're not making a new chemical compound. The particles rearrange, not the atoms. So what I mean by that again is in solid, in a solid um, state or a solid phase, for example, the particles are closely packed. They're densely packed. They vibrate in a fixed position. When that solid go turns into a liquid, so when there's a phase change, the particles essentially rearrange. They move further and further apart from one another. The potential energy increases. But you see, we're not rearranging the atoms. It's not like we're creating a new compound at the atomic or the molecular level. And my last bullet point here is I mentioned that the forces between the particles change. So we can weaken the forces between the particles holding that substance together. But chemical change is a completely different story. That is a reaction. It can be represented by a proper balanced chemical equation. We have reactants. They react together. Bonds are broken. The atoms rearrange. And we form new products. So we rearrange the atoms and the substance changes at a molecular or an atomic level. And this is, for example, happens when water, um, wa when water forms and hydrogen combusts and oxygen. For example, hydrogen gas reacting with oxygen gas to form water. Here's another few differences. If you look at physical change, we can see that the mass, the number of atoms, and the number of molecules are conserved. In other words, they stay the same. So an example of a physical change would be going from solid H2O to liquid H2O. Can you see that the mass is the same? It would be the same. So what I mean by mass is if I take the atomic mass numbers and I work out the molar mass of the compound, the mass of hydrogen is 1. We multiply it by 2 because I have two hydrogens, plus 16. Okay, so I've got 18 grams per mole over here and exactly the same on the other side. 18 grams per mole so the mass has been conserved the number of atoms have been conserved over here i have two hydrogens and i have one oxygen over here i have two hydrogens and i have one oxygen same thing and the number of molecules i have one molecule of water here and one molecule of water here but in a chemical change, like the example I used on the previous slide, if I have hydrogen gas reacting with oxygen gas to form H2O, first of all, we will have to balance the equation because mass and number of atoms will always be conserved. That's the law of conservation of mass. It has to be obeyed. We can't create or destroy matter. It's, it has to be conserved, which means the mass of the, the left hand side, the reactants has to equal the mass of the right hand side. So how would we balance this equation? Well, I have two oxygens over here. I only have one over here. See, there's a little invisible one there. So I need to put a big two in front of the water. You can't put a little number here. It's not how it works. You can't change the number of atoms. But now I have two oxygens. So the oxygens are balanced. That's good. But now the H's are not balanced. On the left hand side, I have two hydrogens. On the right hand side, I have two times two. I have four hydrogens. So I need to put another two over here. By doing that, I've conserved the number of atoms. So as I mentioned, I have four hydrogens on each side. And I have two oxygens on each side. So the amount or the number of atoms have been conserved. The mass will also be conserved. So like I did with molar mass over here, you can do it for the reactants and the products and if the number is the same that means that mass has been conserved and mass will most definitely be conserved and it says here but not the number of molecules so i have two molecules of hydrogen over here one molecule of oxygen over here okay so three molecules of my reactants and two molecules of my products 
So let's go on to some past paper questions. Magnesium ribbon burns in oxygen with a bright white flame to produce a white solid magnesium oxide. Then they want the type of chemical bonding in the magnesium ribbon. Well, we know magnesium is a metal, so that would be metallic bonding. Okay. And remember, metallic bonding is between your positive ions and your delocalized electrons within this metal. And then magnesium oxide. So magnesium, we said, is a metal. It bonds with oxygen, it says here. It burns in oxygen, and oxygen is a non-metal. So when we have a metal bonding with a non-metal, what type of bonding do we have? We have ionic bonding. Ionic bonding. Metal and non-metal. 6.2 says, is the reaction between magnesium ribbon and oxygen a physical or a chemical change? Give a reason for the answer. Well, we just mentioned that the reaction between the magnesium ribbon and the oxygen will produce a new compound, a white solid. So this is most definitely a chemical change. And our reason for that is a new substance has been produced. A new substance has been produced. If they ask for a more detailed explanation, you can speak about the bonds in the oxygen and the magnesium breaking, essentially, and then the atoms rearranging to form a new substance. You can speak about the mass and the number of atoms that would be conserved, but the number of molecules that will not be conserved. It says you write down a balanced equation for the reaction between magnesium and oxygen. So let's do that. 6.3 so we've got magnesium plus oxygen oxygen is diatomic it needs o2 gives me magnesium oxide now you need to write the symbol for magnesium oxide correctly we know magnesium has a charge of plus two oxygen has a charge of minus two together it must give me zero plus two minus two yep that gives me zero so therefore i need one magnesium and one oxygen m g o just be careful because for example if magnesium had to bond with chlorine then magnesium's charge is plus two chlorine's charge is minus one that doesn't give me zero so i would need another chlorine atom over here Okay, magnesium can give away two electrons. Chlorine needs one electron. Therefore, I need two chlorine atoms. So that would be MgCl2. Okay, but obviously this is not our example. I just want you to be careful. Then to balance, we have two oxygens on the side. Remember, the number of atoms have to be conserved. So it has to be the same. So if I have two oxygens on the side and have one oxygen over here, I need to make this oxygen become a two oxygen. But you can't put little numbers in when you balance. No, that's only when you do naming. So when you balance a chemical reaction or a chemical equation, you need to use big numbers, coefficients. So now what that two means is that I have two oxygens. Cool, so my oxygens are balanced. But now look at my magnesiums. That too also means that I have two magnesiums on this side, on the right-hand side. But on the left-hand side, I only have one magnesium. So we're just going to put another two over there. 6.4 wants me to use the law of conservation of mass to show that mass is conserved during the reaction in 6.3. Okay, so this is the reaction in 6.3. I just rewrote it and I kept it balanced. And using the law of conservation of mass means that I need to go to my periodic table and I need to use the atomic mass numbers or the relative atomic masses of each individual element and work out the mass of the reactants on the left hand side and the mass of the products on the right hand side. If I get the same number, then I know, cool, the law of conservation of mass has been obeyed and mass has been conserved. So now what this means, so let's divide it up. This is my reactants, so these are my reactants, and these are my products. Let's do reactants first. Magnesium, this two, what that two means is that I have two magnesium little molecules, okay? Magnesium, magnesium, technically two magnesium atoms, okay? Magnesium. Oxygen, we know that oxygen looks like this. The reason why it's double bonded is because that the oxygens are bonded covalently, they share two pairs of electrons. But I have one oxygen molecule. On this side, I have two magnesium oxides. 
Now with Lewis dot diagrams, this is technically what magnesium oxide looks like. If you need more help trying to figure out why they have brackets and charges, please watch my video on ionic bonding. But basically, we know that we have magnesium oxide. It has one magnesium, one oxide, one oxygen, and we have two of them. So I'm going to erase the confusing Lewis dot diagram in brackets. It's not very important here. We basically have magnesium oxide and another magnesium oxide. So if you take a look, we have one, two oxygens on the left-hand side, two oxygens on the right-hand side, two magnesiums here, two magnesiums here. So when we do the mass, we take the mass of magnesium, which if you look at your periodic table, it is 24, and we times it by two. Then plus the mass of oxygen is 16, and we times it by two. That gets me 80. If we look at the right hand side, remember we said again, we have two magnesiums, okay? Two magnesiums. So it's 24 times two, plus we have two oxygens there, we can see them. So it is 16 times two, and again, we get 80. And then I just want you to make a statement that says, the mass of the reactants equals the mass of the products. 80 is equal to 80. Therefore, mass is conserved. And this basically helps us prove that this is a chemical change, but we can see the number of molecules is not conserved. There's three molecules of reactants and two molecules of products. We've completely produced a new product, a new chemical, therefore chemical change. If you look at this question, they say study the following substances. Now I'm just focusing in on this question because it has to do with physical and chemical change. And in this question, it says substance D, which we can see is carbon dioxide. And in brackets, it says S. Now, I hope that you know that that little S over there represents the fact that the carbon dioxide is in its solid form. If it's a little S in brackets, it means solid. If it's a L, it means liquid phase. If it is A, Q, it means aqueous phase, and if it's a little g, it means gas phase. So the S means that we're dealing with solid carbon dioxide, also known as dry ice, and they say that this substance undergoes sublimation. Now you need to know that sublimation is a direct phase change from a solid to a gas. So there's no intermediate phase, it skips the liquid phase. Represent this change with a chemical equation. Now what they want you to do is they want you to say, okay, cool. One carbon dioxide molecule, which is in its solid phase, goes straight or will turn into or will become carbon dioxide in its gas phase. And sometimes they use reversible arrows here just to show that this process is reversible. We can go from solid to gas and gas back to solid again. But from solid to gas, that is known as sublimation. And that's how you would represent this change with a chemical equation. Can you see that this represents a physical change and not a chemical change? So we're using a chemical equation, but it's not illustrating a chemical change. It's not a chemical reaction. This is a physical change because we've got a substance going from its solid phase to its gas phase. We've obviously added in some heat energy. It's caused the particles to move further and further apart. It's resulted in a phase change. We haven't produced a new chemical substance. We've conserved the number of atoms, number of molecules, and the mass. No new products have been formed. This is a straight up physical change. I hope the difference between physical and chemical change is clear. Remember to practice balancing chemical equations because that falls under chemical change. If you need a video on that, I do have a video on that, which I will link up above and in the description below. I hope to see you for another video. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Goodbye, everybody.